we have a diving board and it's supported by two parts A and B and we have a person at the end of the diving board and our goal here is to try to figure out how much force is being exerted at A and how much force is being exerted at B. So we're going to draw a free body diagram. Now when you have an elongated object like a diving board you can't really represent it as a point. You have to draw a line and we're going to draw the various forces that are acting on it at the different locations where they're actually being applied. So obviously A exerts a force, B exerts a force, and one of the tricky things for people is trying to figure out which way A and B are exerting a force. Um, in a way it can be a bit of a guess. I oftentimes like to play around with something like a pen could represent the diving board. And so do you think that both A and B are pushing up? Well let's do that with the pen. Well that that seems to be an unstable situation if they're both pushing up. Um, how about B being like a, a seesaw point, so pushing up at B, and A pushing down, holding it down. A um, little hard to illustrate here on a flat piece of paper, but kind of a good guess that B is up and A is down. Now, let me draw that and then talk about that a little bit more. So let's say that this is the force B, and let's say that this is force A. Now maybe that didn't make sense to you what I just said. Maybe you thought that A was up and B was down or, or some other combination. Here's the deal. It's okay. You could draw this in the wrong direction. In fact, you know what? Let me do that. Let's just say we thought that both A and B were up. What I want to show you is it's not critical. You can make a mistake with the direction and still end up with the right answer. So let's see, let's see how that works. Anyway, I'm drawing that A is exerting a force. I'm drawing that B is exerting a force. Now here it says the board has a mass of 25 kilograms. So you're going to draw the weight of the board coming from the center of mass, the center of the board. So I'm going to draw 25 times 9.8 which is 245 newtons. And then we have a person out here at the end. That's going to be a force vector as well. And that's going to be 75 times 9.8 newtons. I think that's 735, but I'm going to double check that. So 75 times 9.8, yeah, 735 newtons. Okay, those are all our forces. So now what we want to do is, uh, you know, if this thing is at rest, then when you add up the torques, they should equal zero. And you should be able to add up the torques around any point and find that they're equal to zero. So we can pick any point as our rotation point or what we call the fulcrum. Um, so it doesn't matter what the point is. However, putting the fulcrum at a location where there's an unknown does make your equation simpler. So let me show you that. I'm going to put the fulcrum right here at force A. And now what I'm going to do is add up all the torques around this location. They have to equal zero, otherwise this thing wouldn't be at rest. Um, so essentially, we know this torque and that torque because we have those numbers. What we're really doing is finding out, well, how big does force B have to be in order for there to be no torques around this point right here? So let's start. Remember that um, when you're adding up torque, torque is R, F, sine, theta. And we also need to figure out the direction of the torque, whether it's positive or negative. Um, so we're going to do all those things. So let's start with force A. What's the radius of force A? Well, radius is the distance between the axis of rotation and the point where the force is being applied. Well, they're at the exact same location here. So the radius for force A is zero because force A is being applied at the axis of rotation. So zero times force A and the sine of the angle doesn't even matter because it's all being multiplied by zero. Um, all right, let's go to force B. So how far is force B from the axis of rotation? If we look at the given information here, it's at a distance of L over 3. So I'm going to do L over 3 times force B. And then the angle, it's the angle between the radius, which looks like that, and the force, which looks like that. So it's going to be times the sine of 90. Now, figuring out positive or negative is often tricky for people. I'll give you the simplest way to do it. And that is traditionally, when you look at a piece of paper, if a torque has a tendency to make something go counterclockwise, we call it a positive torque. 
if it has a tendency to make something go uh, clockwise, that's not clockwise, that's the same thing. All right, clockwise, which looks like that, we call it uh, negative torque. There are more sophisticated ways of doing it with the right hand rule, but let's just stick with that easy method right now. So if you think about this as being a hinge and force B pushing it that way, look at which way it's going to go. It's going to go counterclockwise, which is considered to be the positive direction. So I'm going to put a positive in front of that. So it doesn't matter whether the forces are positive or negative because we're using the absolute value of the force. All that matters is it would have a tendency to make it go counterclockwise, which is traditionally the positive direction. All right, let's move on to this 245 Newton force. Now, the 245 Newton force would have a tendency to make this rotate in the clockwise direction. So I'm going to put a negative sign in front of it. This is the center of mass of the board, which would be halfway through the board, L over 2. And the amount of force is 245. It doesn't matter that it points downward because we're using the absolute value of the force. And again, the angle between the radius and the force is 90 degrees. Lastly, we get to the torque due to the person. And again, that would have a tendency to make this go clockwise. So it's a negative torque. And uh, if we uh, calculate this, let's see what we get here. So L, the radius is all the way at the end. Uh, the force is 735, and then sine of 90. So 1, 2, 3, 4, those are our four torques, although this one actually isn't exerting any torque. Um, they had better equal to 0, otherwise this object will be rotating. And so now, by the way, notice that the L's cancel out. And so now it's just a matter of doing the algebra and getting the answer to this question. So let me do that um, quickly here. So it uh, looks like we have 245, whoops, 245 divided by 2. And we have uh, 735, I need to add those together. And then I need to multiply by three to get the final answer. So 2,572.5. Force B is equal to 2,572.5 Newtons. So that is one of our answers. Now we have to go back and figure out what force A is equal to. Here you have two options. One option, is now just add up all the forces. If something's at rest, then not only are the torques adding up to zero, but the forces are adding up to zero also. Here we only have y direction forces, so we're adding up the forces in the y direction, seeing what it takes to make sure that they're equal to zero. So let's look at the diagram. Now when we talk about positive or negative, we're talking about up and down, not clockwise or counterclockwise. That only applies to torques. When you're looking at forces in the y direction, you're talking about up versus down. So the way I drew it, the way I drew it, FA is positive, it's up. FB is positive, and it's 2,572.5. Um, and then we have a minus 245 and minus 735, because those are both down. They have to add up to zero. Let's see what we get as an answer. We get that force A is equal to, let me do the algebra here, um, so 2,572.5 minus 245 minus 735. But then basically we have to move it to the other side of the equation, which gives us a negative answer for force A. I get negative 1,592.5 newtons. So what does the negative answer mean? And this is what I was mentioning to you earlier. It's not critical that you pick the correct direction for these unknown forces. Turns out that we chose the wrong direction. That as I said earlier, force A really does, well it's hard to redraw that, but force A really does point downward. How do I know? Because when I said that it pointed upward, I ended up with a negative answer. The negative here means you guessed the wrong direction. So if you ever solve one of these equilibrium problems and you get a negative answer for one of your forces, it means that you guessed the wrong direction and that you should draw it in the opposite direction than you did in your diagram.